Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure, with chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Look at yourself. Bags under your eyes. What happened? I didn't get a wink of sleep last night. Uh, why not? Well, I made a mistake. In the dark, I plugged my electric blanket into the automatic record changer, and all night long, it kept flipping me over and playing my other side. <laughs> Talk sense. Why don't you get out and get yourself a job? I'm going, Abbott. I'm going to get a real job. The honest sweat of toil is the greatest reward of a real man. Work is the backbone of the American people. The only thing that matters is earnest toil and the knowledge and the satisfaction of a job well done. Why, that's wonderful, Costello. Where did you read that? On the wall of the unemployment office while I was waiting for my check. <laughs> I thought there was something fishy. If you lived in Europe, you'd know what work is. Well, my Uncle Mike came from the old country, you know. He did? He read all about America and the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So he came over, and now he has 15 kids. Fifteen kids? Fifteen kids. He says they supply the government and he supplies the people. Right. Uh, listen to me. Another reason you'll never get a job is because you sleep too much. Uh, what time do you get up today? <laughs> Two o'clock this afternoon. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Why don't you get up at seven o'clock every morning? Oh, I couldn't do that, Abbott. How do you know? You never tried it. I never tried to lay an egg either, but I know darn well I can't do I... it. <laughs> get him out of here. Before the boys get any further involved in nonsense, here's a thought that makes good sense. yelling over at your house last night? Well, it was my Aunt May's birthday party and all our relatives were there. Well, how old is your Aunt May? Well, I don't know exactly, Abbott, but there were so many candles on the cake they had a forest ranger standing by. <laughs> did you have fun? Oh, did I have fun. We played all kinds of games. And about four o'clock in the morning, I suggested we play Indians and burn somebody at the stake. I'll bet that was exciting. Everybody laughed, but we're sure going to miss Uncle Tom. I... <laughs> Was all your family at the party, Lou? Well, uh, even my Uncle Jim Kelly. You know, we haven't seen him for years. He's a sailor on the S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-
who has the most gorgeous cousin you've ever seen, who has a girlfriend who is out of the world. Her name is Jane. And you're going out with Jane? No, I'm going bowling with her father. <laughs> is this girl Jane really pretty, Lou? Ah, uh, she's really pretty. Yeah, but she's beautiful. Uh, do you think you can get any place with her? Ah, <laughs> do I think? Listen to this. While the party was on, we sneaked out onto the patio. It was pitch dark. Yes. We sat there on a bench, and I kind of shifted over towards her, and she kind of slid over towards me until we were real, real close yes, together. Yes. Then it happened. What? She held her arm right close to my ear and let me listen to her wristwatch. That... <laughs> no, nope. you idiot! You're out with a beautiful girl, and you listen to her wristwatch. That—that that isn't all I did, Abbott. I haven't told you the best part. Well, now that's different. What else did you do? I took her for a ride in a taxi cab. You did? Mm-hmm. How, how far did you go with her? Well, not very far. I only had 35 cents. <laughs> Costello, why don't you stop wasting your time chasing girls? Journey Elks or the Eagles. You can have more fun with fellows. You know, I already belong to a club, Abbott. It's yeah. a wonderful club. It's, a, it's to keep young fellows like myself from chasing girls. Now you're talking. Yes, we even got a sign on our clubhouse door that says, Positively, no women admitted. Mm-hmm. How often do you meet there? Ha-ha. <laughs> We don't meet there. We meet on the Santa Monica Pier. <laughs> Just how do you explain your great love for women? Maybe Lee? it's because I was born twins. You know, Abbott, I had a twin sister. Oh, I didn't know that, Just Oh, sure. Here's a picture of me and my sister when we were six months old. Say, let me see that. You are identical twins. Sure. Which one is you? I'm the one with the Tony. Tony? <laughs> Tony! Why, you're both bald-headed. Abbott, you're holding the picture upside down. I... <laughs> my, you are a cute baby. Yes, and when I was a baby, I was so pretty that my mother used to rent me out for baby pictures. You know, baby pictures for advertising. They took so many baby pictures of me that up, up to the time I was five years old, whenever I saw a camera, I'd back up to it. <laughs> Costello, you really are a tiny baby. Yeah, when I was born, I only weighed four pounds. Four pounds? Four pounds. How did you live? I sold newspapers. I... <laughs> oh, Sam, will you please? Where, where were you born? Yeah, where was I born? Yeah. On a ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean during a big storm. Gee, that must have been rough on your mother. Oh, my mother wasn't there. I was traveling with my aunt at the time. I... <laughs> Uh, Mr. Costello, I heard you were looking for a job And we need a bright-looking young fellow like you To sell our new beauty soap Hey, now, that sounds interesting, Costello Is it uh, good beauty soap? Good We guarantee this beauty soap to take an ugly person And make them as lovely as Betty Grable in 14 days Does it really work? Does it work? Look at that tall blonde sitting in the second row Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Pretty blonde, but she doesn't look like Betty Grable <laughs> Maybe not but don't forget that 14 days ago, that blonde was a traffic cop at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. <laughs> Abbott, you gotta get your relatives off this show. Oh, Mr. Costello! Mr. Costello! You've gotta help me! You've gotta help me! Did I tell you? Here's the other one. <laughs> oh, never mind him, Uncle Harry. What, what's the trouble? Oh, you've got to help me. Somebody's got to help me. Please help me. All right, so what's wrong? Oh, night after night, I stay awake. I'm always up. Night and day for the past two weeks, I've been up all night. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I'm a nervous wreck. Please tell me what to do. Why don't you go to bed? Oh, gee, thanks, Lord. <laughs> But I'd like to take your uncle over to the ostrich farm next Sunday. What for? I want to show the ostriches how to lay those big ones. <laughs> you lay off my Uncle Harry. He doesn't have to be uh, on this show, you know. He owns a store in the valley. He sells deep freezers. He does? Yes. You ought to go over and buy one. You ought to buy one of those deep freezers off him, Lou. I've got a deep freezer, Rabbit. I've got things that I've had in there for ten years. Well, it's about time you took your jokes out of there and put some meat in. <laughs> I'd 
like to know in the script where it says that. <laughs> Abbott, you better be careful. Stuff like that that split up Dorenthe and Moore. <laughs> Boys. Hello, Viola Vaughn. Well, well, boys. Well, boys, what are you... That's Excuse her. Me, that's you. <laughs> well, boys, what are you arguing about tonight? Well, Abbott keeps bringing his relatives in here every week, and besides that, he's insinuating that I'm a lousy actor. And you're not? Certainly not. He should read my fan mail. Why should I read your fan mail? Well, some... Well, somebody should read it. He can't. <laughs> You better talk fast, kid. I'm in on everybody today. Uh-uh, uh-uh, Costello, watch yourself. You know how nervous you get around girls. Uh, you've been having trouble with your nerves, Costello? You betcha, and how? I have a take of vitamins. I take vitamin B for my nerves, vitamin C for my skin, vitamin D for my bones, and vitamin A so I can see at night. Why do you have to see at night? So I can find a bottle of the vitamins A, B, and C, and D. <laughs> Costello, why don't you take cod liver oil? The old, I've taken so much cod liver oil that my mother has to get me out of the bathtub with a net. <laughs> the old, the poor guy's nerves are all shot. Can you do anything to help him? I sure can, bud. Come here, Lou. What are you going to do, Viola? I'm going to give you a kiss that'll put new life in your nervous system and make you tick like a watch. A kiss that will make me tick like a watch? I don't think you can do it. Oh, no? Come here. <laughs> The time will be 7.15 and one quarter. <laughs> and that's only half the fun, folks. Just as many laughs yet to come. But first, listen to this. So darling, hurry, hurry, hurry back to me When we say goodnight, I'm in such misery Maybe it's because I like your company Maybe it's because I love you possibly So darling, hurry, hurry, hurry back to me You kiss my lips and start a fire I think I'm melting in your arms We kiss again, the flame goes higher then I'm up in heaven, you're so charming Hurry, 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 hurry back to me Every night without you is eternity If you want to know how happy you can be Then darling, hurry, hurry, hurry back to me 
don't stay away so long, darling, how I yearn. I sing this little song, hoping you'll return, dear. Hurry, 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 hurry back to me. When I'm all alone, I'm lonely as can be. All I do is think about you constantly. So, darling, hurry, hurry, hurry back to me. When we say goodnight, I'm in such misery. Maybe it's because I like your company. Maybe it's because I love you possibly. So, darling, hurry, hurry, hurry back to me. You kiss my lips and start a fire. I think I'm melting in your arms. We kiss again, the flame goes higher. Then I'm up in heaven. You're so charming. Hurry, 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 hurry back to me. Every night without you is eternity. If you want to know how happy you can be, then darling, hurry, 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 hurry back to me. Well, Costello, tomorrow's April Fool's Day. I suppose you're getting ready to play jokes on all your friends? Oh, I started that yesterday, Abbott. Last night I played an April Fool's joke on my brother Pat. I sneaked up behind him, put a giant firecracker in his pocket, tied a Roman candle to his belt, and then I placed a rocket bomb under his chair and and lit them all at once. How did your brother Pat take the joke? As soon as he comes down, I'll ask him. (laughs) I think April Fool jokes are kind of silly, Lou. Yes, especially the one my Aunt Alma pulled on my Uncle Tom. She put cleaning fluid in his coffee, (laughs) ant paste on his toast, and then she sprinkled camphor flakes on his cereal. Did Uncle Tom think it was funny? He must have. The ambulance driver said he'd, he'd die with a smile on his face. <laughs> hey, did you pull any other jokes on your family, Lou? Oh, sure. Last night I crossed the wires on our garbage disposal with the wires on a television set. Then I plugged it in. What happened? Arthur Godfrey was ground to bits and we got the only garbage with an 86-point Hooper rating. <laughs> well, that's... That's a higher rating than you've got on your uh, Sam Shovel Detective series, Lou. That's a lie. Oh, no. My Sam Shovel Detective business is growing all the time. I got my operators spying all over the country. You've got men spying all over the country? Sure. I got one guy spying in Washington, one in Paris, one in London, one in Patterson, New Jersey. I got one in Hedy Lamar's dressing room. Oh, wait a minute. Why have you got a guy spying in Hedy Lamar's dressing room for? Oh, he's on vacation. He's... <laughs> Can you talk sense? What is your Sam Shovel like case? Ah, oh, it's a very interesting case, Abbott. I call it the case of the gorgeous blonde model who fell into a vat of whiskey at the distillery. Or there's good booze tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds terrible, but let's do it. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. As I open the door to my office, I suspect foul play. There's my secretary lying on the floor with a gag in her mouth. Hi, Sam. Who was that lady I saw you with last night? She got the gag out. (laughs) Better she should have left it in. What has been going on here, Miss Blue? Oh, Mr. Shovel, two guys broke in here and stole your safe, your filing cabinets, and your petty cash box. Anything else? That's all I can think of. Well, I'll sit down and get to work. Oh, yes, they also took your chair. (laughs) Suddenly, I heard a noise in my office. The door is creaking open. I whip out my gun. All right, whoever it is, I'm warning you. One false move and you're a dead duck. Well, looks like I'll have duck for dinner tonight. (laughs) That's the trouble with this detective business. You never know who will drop into your office. Come in. That's the Sam Shovel of Private Detective. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Sam Shovel, Private Detective. Detective. Who might you be? My name is she's a Giuseppe Pasta Cheech. I got a bigger trouble under my life, Sam. I need your help. 
You see, I work all day for the sand the hog. You see, that's what the people make the soup away. Mm-hmm. I yeah. work hard all day. I come home at night. I told my wife at dinner she's got to be on the table at 6 o'clock. Six o'clock? Six o'clock at the dinner, she's got to be on the table. Interesting case. Last night, I come home. No dinner, no wine, and no wife. I walk in the next room. My wife is kissing another fellow. <laughs> Sam, I was losing my temperature. <laughs> I take a lot of stole and I kill him a boat. Why did you do that for? Because in my house, the dinner's got to be on the table at six o'clock every night. <laughs> That's an interesting case. <laughs> this detective business gets worse every day. Sometimes I wish I were more like my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad. Lieutenant Abbott don't spend his money foolishly. Every time he makes money, he salts some of it away. He's been salting his money away for ten years now. Of course, he's only got nine dollars, but it's covered with 1,800 pounds of salt. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott is a good family man. He always brings home his pay envelope. Once he lost his job and his wife found a pink slip in his envelope. That didn't upset her, but when she looked further and found a pair of bloomers, she blew her top. <laughs> Abbott is a pretty sporty dresser. He wears the kind of clothes you see around the tracks. The railroad tracks. <laughs> the lieutenant is probably next door having a drink. Abbott ain't such a heavy drinker. He'll only take a drink before meals. Of course, he eats 37 times a day. <laughs> Hello, Sam. It's my pal, Lieutenant Abbott. You look tired, Lieutenant. What's the trouble? No, it's my wife, Sam. We've been I fighting see. for two weeks. Dinner has to be on the table at six, six o'clock. Six o'clock. Oh, no, Sam. She don't appreciate me. She don't know how lucky she is. <laughs> Why, when I married her, she didn't have a rag on her back. Now look at her. You're right. Now she's got rags all over. <laughs> Sam, you're going to have to move your office. The city is going to use that lot across the street for a garbage dump. Yes, I know. I got wind of it this morning. <laughs> this neighborhood is getting tougher all the time. This morning I saw a guy in front of this building stepping on a cigar butt. What's tough about that? Lots of men step on cigar butts. While they're still in the man's mouth. <laughs> Sam Shovel speaking. Sam, this is Milk Bronson. You gotta help me. My wife suspects that I'm running around with that new cutie that moved into the neighborhood. Ain't that terrible? It sure is. What does she think it is? The new manicurist at the barbershop? No. The new redhead cashier at the cafeteria? No. The new blonde widow that moved in across the street? No. But thanks for giving me three good leads. <laughs> Answering that phone, you should listen to the police radio. Maybe you can pick up a case. Okay, I'll turn it on. Calling car 98. Calling car 98. Car 98, we bought back to the station house. You're left without a driver. <laughs> Shut that thing off. Shut it off, Sam. I nearly forgot to tell you. One of uh, your old girlfriends is in town. You worked on our case last summer. Who is it, Mabel? No. Was it Gladys? No. Helen? No. Try Shirley. Shirley? Wrong again. Uh. <laughs> it's Ingrid, the international spy. Sam, I want you to help me capture her. Nothing doing, Lieutenant. Ingrid is dangerous. My brother Pat was out with her last night, and she cut off one of his ears. Just a minute, Sam. I saw your brother Pat this morning. He's got two ears. Yes. Now he has. <laughs> Sam, you're a cop. <laughs> Just get it, eh? <laughs> Sam, you're a cop. You're afraid of Ingrid. No, I ain't, but I just ain't in shape. You know I got a cold. But I told you to go home last night and soak your feet in hot water. Did you do it? Yes. Well, don't your feet feel better? Yes, I feel mm. all right, but my shoes are awful soggy. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense. Sam Shovel, you're going to help me capture Ingrid, the international spy. Come on. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott and I went to Ingrid's home. As we entered the living room, there she stood. She was more beautiful than ever in her usual soft, ladylike tone. 
Ingrid, the international spy, spoke. Well, what do you two fat-headed flat feet want? Ingrid, we're here to take you in. You're through being an international spy. From now on, you can spy for Warner Brothers. <laughs> you mugs got nothing on me, and you'll never nail my gang either. They're too good at disguises. Why, one of my boys is working here in town right under your noses, disguised as a cocker spaniel. That must be a pretty good disguise. Good? The last time I saw him, Lassie was following him down Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> Sam, you gotta get on the right side of her We need those secret papers Now go ahead and play up to her Okay, watch this technique Go ahead Ingrid, you're beautiful Come to my arms Ah, Sam When you talk like that, I can't resist you Lean close to me Sugar zero Sugar zero Sam, what are you doing? Sugar zero Sam, what are you doing? I'm whispering sweet nothings in her ear Stop stalling, Sam. We've got to get those papers. Okay. I'll give her one of my special kisses. Ingrid, I'm going to give you a kiss that you'll feel from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. How do you do that, Sam? While I'm kissing you, I stand on your feet and hit you on the head with a hammer. (laughs) Sam, we're going to get those plans and you have to marry her to do it. Okay, Sam, I'll marry you. You will? Yeah, but there's something I gotta tell you first, Sam What is it, Ingrid? I've been married four times already Well, that ain't so much In the last month? (laughs) I've heard enough Ingrid, you're under arrest Not so fast, copper You came here for the stolen plans, didn't you? Okay, here they are Take them, Sam Thanks, Ingrid Lieutenant, look These are the plans of the Los Angeles police have been looking for all year The most important plans of all What are they? The plans for starting a pyramid club. Get them out of here! Okay! Now, before Abbott and Costello have their final play, we bring you one more thought on this subject. just got time enough to tell the folks about our big boxing uh, show for the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation. Folks, we're presenting a boxing match May 26th here in Los Angeles for the lightweight championship of the world with Ike Williams and Enrique Capelanis. And if you're headed out this way, don't miss this title fight. You'll be getting the thrill of a lifetime and helping a very worthy cause. Be sure to listen to the Abbott and Costello show next Thursday. Our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Conlon, Pat Costello, Martin Ragaway and Len Stern. And our producer is Charles Vander. Good night, folks. Good night to everybody in Patterson. Good night. Good night. Good night. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. 